Okay. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, so this is um, I was I was going for the most clickbait uh, title of the of the Lions Walks this evening. Twelve things everyone needs to know about data. Um, so this talk is um, if anyone's familiar with papers we love um, as a as a concept or as a meetup. It's um, it's really uh, people talking about the like papers they find really interesting, and this is this is coming from a paper um, that that I discovered when working for a um, a national government department trying to implement a. Oh, sorry, so you've got lots of clipping. Is there something I can do about that? I wonder. Um, Maybe try to remove your video, and let's see if it's better. Okay. One, two, can you hear me? Okay, well, I might have to, I'll, I'll just try and speak a little bit softer and um, we might have to deal with it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, 12 things everyone needs to know about data. So this was, um, this presentation is about a paper that we discovered um, about data set summarization, um, working on a, um, a search engine for a data search engine, in fact, for a, a national government department um, who wanted to, they had lots of data um, and they were very good at publishing their data, um, but they weren't quite so good at finding and using their data. And we were there to, to implement something for that. Um, so it turns out that um, departments are, well, organizations in general um, are quite good at publishing data, so they're quite good at getting it out there and making sure that it's correct and making sure that on the whole, things that are not meant to be published aren't published and that the things that are published are correct and in the right place. Um, but what, they, um, what they're less good at is actually helping people once the publishing has happened um, to get any benefit from that data. So, so our model of, um, of of how people kind of benefit from open data is really kind of a four-step thing. Um, so first they have to discover it. Um, they have to actually find the data that is relevant to them, whether that's via a search engine or via uh, an index or a catalog system. Then they have to evaluate what they found. Does that, does that data set actually help solve their problem? Does it contain the right things? Um, then they have to integrate it, whether that's with their analysis or with their service or their software. And only then do they actually start to get the benefit from the data. And, and so our hypothesis was that um, having collected together thousands of data sets from across this organization, it was very clear that whilst the organization was good at getting the data out there, it wasn't so good at actually helping its users do one, two, and three. Um, it, it, the, the information about the data sets was not, um, not particularly well suited to what people were actually wanting to do. Um, so when we came along to implement a, a data search engine, we, we looked first at data.gov.uk. Um, so this is the kind of UK government's national data search engine. Um, and uh, on the whole, it's pretty good. It's certainly a good place to start. Um, but And you can see kind of for number one on the left, um, is where you start your discovery journey. Number two is maybe where you're starting to evaluate those results. And number three is another kind of key part of that evaluation and infrastructure. Uh, an integration, sorry. So, but it's, I think I think what we found was it left something to be desired. So that thing on the right-hand side, it's a, it's a nice looking interface, number three, but you can see if you, if you squint and look closely, you can see that the summary that you've got there is hate crimes or incidents as recorded by NYP. Um, so that, that summary, that, that's the only information you get about that data set and actually leaves a lot to be desired. So, you know, what is a hate crime as defined by this publisher? Um, how is that different from an incident? Um, what what was recorded? What when? What 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 kind of uh, temporal extent is covered by this data set? Like, is it last year? Is it ten years ago? Who knows? And also, who is NYP? Um, I mean, it's published by City of York Council. So, is it North Yorkshire Police? Could be, but we don't know. Um, so, there's a lot to, a lot to still be desired. So, even if your interface is quite nice actually getting the information into it that's correct and helpful is another difficult problem. And helping publishers understand what they need um, was, was the hard thing. 
So enter this um, fantastic paper, in my opinion, um, from the University of Southampton and the ODI, Open Data Institute. Um, really, they, they also had this question uh, and they went to apply actual science to it and they did a research project, quite a long research project, into how um, how users uh, discover, evaluate data, what they need to know, and what they managed to come up with was a template for what you need to know about um, about every data set that you that you have in your catalog. Um, and it's it's linked there on archive. Obviously, you've got you can download the slides and extract that link if you want, or there's a QR code. Um, but this is a really great paper. Um, it's, it's they've really kind of gone to town on this topic. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about the actual science behind what they did. So they did two different um, kind of they have two different research questions. And they so the first thing was um, they got sixty nine students to do two hundred sixty nine searches for data. Um, and they had to complete diaries uh, when they were doing that task. Uh, and really, the diaries were there to say, to ask the question, OK, while you're searching for data, what are the questions that you're asking yourself? What are the questions that you're getting answers to? But what do you want to know? Um, so they did 269 of those. And they also did a study on summaries. So actually looking at what is it that people will write about when you ask them to summarize a data set. Um, so they did a kind of controlled lab experiment, and they also did a crowdsourced experiment um, for that. Uh, and that, that kind of looked at 360 different, they, they generated 360 different summaries for 25 different data sets uh, across 80 people. And so this is actually quite a lot of research. And um, the paper obviously goes into a lot more detail about how they did it. Um, but what was really interesting, so this is this is kind of a summary of the findings. And then, by the way, anything that's read on these slides is from me, and everything else is from the paper. So I'm, I'm really just ripping ripping off the paper quite heavily here, and it's it's a great paper. Um, but there's some really interesting things in this. So in this summaries column here, this is the um, the stuff that was written for um, for the research project about data sets. So they said to people, okay, go away, look at this data set and write a summary of it. And this, these are the things that that summary tended to have in it. And then the diary was students who were searching for specific data sets for a specific task, the sorts of things that they wrote in their diary that was influencing their decision about whether to use a data set or not. And then the final column here on the, on the right is um, the coverage of those things within the two kind of leading um open metadata standards so uh, schema.org has a has a, a data set standard and and dcat is another uh, data cataloging standard um so there's a few really interesting things uh, i think that come out of this um so number one on the on the kind of coverage here and i guess it's what i'd call extent so geographical extent or temporal extent um the thing that gets written in a summary is often a lot less detailed than is actually um, actually required from a diary point of view. So generally, there was some coverage in most of the summaries of like geospatial scope. You know, what's the the, the land area that is covered by this data set or the temporal coverage? So like what year are we talking about um, when we're talking about this data set? And um, but in the diary, there's a lot more information that's required. So Interestingly enough, the location of the publishing organization comes up here. So, you know, where is this organization that's actually publishing the data based? Does that kind of have a bias on their on their geographical scope? And in the temporal in particular, a huge amount more information. So how granular is it? Like when was the data collected? Um, how up to date is uh, the data? Uh, so, you know, are, are we only looking at data from three years ago, but, um, but we're now three years in the future, that sort of thing. So there was a lot to do with extent that was not uh, not quite captured, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, another one that was um, often included in the summary of the data was a kind of analysis of the content. So actually, what does the data show at a high level, um, the patterns and trends? And what was really interesting, I think, about this is that in the diaries for people who are actually discovering data, that wasn't present at all. So what, what the authors of the data had written about what they had learned from the data set didn't really help um, 
actual searches to actually make a decision about whether or not it was the right data set for them. And I think that was that's really interesting because I think it kind of shows that actually a lot of the time um, the initial use of the data set is maybe not what people are, are looking for. Uh, and then another key one that I thought here was um, whereas the summaries often included ideas for what could be used, actually what users generally tended to look for was actually why to not use the data set, which I thought was quite interesting uh, because um, it kind of highlights the fact that it really a lot of users are interested in kind of gotchas, you know, what, what should I not be doing with this data set? Um, and it can be quite hard to discover that information um, if you're not a domain expert in that area. Um, so there's some quite interesting differences between those two. Um, and I think the other interesting thing is the big gap in the metadata standards here on the right. So there's a huge amount of stuff here about quality, kind of statistics, um, usage and, and trends that has absolutely no coverage in any metadata standards. Um, well, I say any, I mean, that's in these two here, but these are the leading ones and the ones that most, um, most kind of data engines consume. Um, so it's really interesting that even though there are these things crop up quite a lot in what people would like to understand about the data, there is no coverage in this metadata to be recorded. So actually making that information machine readable is quite a challenge. Um, so that's kind of a summary of their results. And what they did uh, was they pulled that into a, um, a template. And so this really is uh, a template um, that you, it's kind of a, it, it's, it's a template that you can give to someone who is recording information about a data set and basically say to them, write a summary and make sure you, um, you capture these sorts of things uh, in the data set. Make sure, you, make sure you capture these answers in your summary of the data set. Um, and these, these questions are kind of specifically calibrated to pull out the things that are most interesting to um, users who are trying to discover the data and evaluate it. Um, and this has been a really, really useful template. So I've used this a number of times, um, publishing data on data.gov UK. Um, the one thing I would add to it is that I think that it has been generally really useful. And I know that there are another, a number of kind of um, data publishing processes now, which also include this, is this kind of things to not use the data set for. So if there are any specific gotchas that people need to know about when they use the data, it's often uh, helpful to include those. Um, but so this um, this template here is table eight in that uh, in that research paper, uh, and I think actually, and so it's it's quite near the end. But I, I think it's a really I find it a really useful resource when writing a data set summary to kind of act as prompt for what should be included in that summary. And more often than not, it leads to a far more complete um, summary than if you kind of started from scratch and didn't didn't think too hard about what you what you're doing. Um, and for that reason, in a nutshell, that's why I really love this, this paper from the University of Southampton and the Open Data Institute. And that is my lightning talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Um, uh, so um, um, thank you for that. Um, there's a chance to ask Simon any questions in the chat while we just wind up. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, thank you for all our speakers. Um, I think we can declare our use of Big Blue Button a success. Probably some things to learn there as well. Uh, but um, the uh, I think overall uh, a positive experience. But please do let us know your views. Send us an email. Um, you have my email address from the uh, uh, the, the uh, meeting invitation from the mailing list um, uh, or you can find me on the website okay so uh, thank you to all our speakers our next meeting is actually next monday it's the risk five meetup and then our following meeting will be on the 19th of november and with that thank you very much bye <laughs>